So let's take a closer look at the tags we'll be using in HTML5. So I've got an example here on the screen. This is the link tag, and this is an attribute, and this is a value. So an attribute is an option for a particular tag or element, and then the value is the answer. So I like to think of the attribute as maybe a question, and then the value is the answer to that question. So for example, in this particular case, the link element type is the question, so what type of link is it? And the answer is, it's a CSS file. So that's kind of how I like to think about it. So I'd like to take you out and show you a little bit closer in a browser. I'm actually using Google Chrome, but you could use any browser. And I have my website open, which is creatable.com. So since I'm in Chrome, I'm going up under View and down to Developer and going to View Source. You can view the source code in any browser. This just happens to be the route you'd go through when you're working with Chrome. So here I'm going out and taking a look at the code. And again, at first glance, it's a little intimidating. But it really is just basically the, what we talked about before with tags, values, and attributes. So for example, um, here's the head section. And this is a value of the head section, and this is the attribute of the head section. So you can go down here and break this down. And so if I go down into the body section, any tags that you see, here's a tag. And here is the value, and here is the attribute. Notice the attributes are always in quotation marks. So you can really just go through and look at the code. Now, this is a little intimidating. There's a lot in here of CSS. But I just wanted to show you, if you go in and take a look at the code, this is the actual tag for metadata. Here is the value. And here is the attribute. So again, getting used to looking at tags, values, and attributes when we're working with HTML code. And then when you go in here and view a web page source, it's really not as intimidating. In this lesson, let's take a look at some of the new HTML5 tags or elements that are available to use. Some of them we'll be using in our blog project, but I just wanted to give you a taste of what's available and then give you a great resource where you can learn more. The first tag I wanted to show you is the article tag. The article tag is supported by all the major browsers, Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, and Opera. The article tag or element is used to define content that's specifically designed to stand on its own such as a newspaper article or a forum post. The aside tag is one we'll actually be using in our blog project. It's supported by all the major browsers, and it's used to define content intended to stand on its own in a sidebar. The audio tag is also supported by all the major browsers, and it's used for audio content, such as music or audio streams. The command tag is supported only by Safari at this time, and it's used for a command button that evokes an action, such as a form element like a checkbox or a radio button. The data list is supported only by Firefox and Opera at this time, and it's used to define a list of options. The embed tag is supported by all the major browsers, and it's used to define content that is going to be embedded within the web page, such as a plugin that's needed to display your content properly. The nav tag is used to define navigation links. It's also supported by all the major browsers. So any next or previous buttons that used to be standalone now will be inside the nav tag. And the video tag is also supported by all the major browsers. And guess what that does? It is used to signify video content, so movie clips or video streams. These are just a few examples. There are many other tags that are brand new to HTML5 and some that have been altered, and some tags that no longer exist. So if you want to read more about them, this is a great resource. www.w3schools.com has a great listing of all the tags that are supported in HTML5, and it highlights the ones that are brand new. It also shows what browsers they're supported in. It's a really good resource. I highly recommend you check it out. So this was just a quick introduction to some of the new tags, some of which we will actually be working with in this project, just to get your feet wet in HTML5.
In this lesson, let's talk a little bit about cascading style sheets, or CSS, and how we can use them to make our documents formatting consistent throughout the entire site. I'm looking at the blog site that we're going to be creating. Now, I've added my own picture and my own content. You'll be able to customize yours as you want after the lesson. But I wanted to talk to you about the three different types of CSS styles that you can use, and there's really only one that we'll be using in this particular workshop. The first type is called an inline style. It's where the style is actually written directly into the tag of the HTML code in the document. It would be okay to use something like that if it's a one-time thing. For example, if this headline that says Covered Bridges and Me is never going to look like this anywhere else throughout the entire site, it might be okay to use it for that. The second one is called an embedded style. That's where the styles are embedded in the head section of the document. Now, it's just for that one document, so I could build other documents, other web pages based on that web page and copy those styles over, but it's still very limiting. If I go back at some point and decide to use this, let's say I make this one an embedded style within the head section of my document, and I build 20 other web pages based on this page, and I decide later to come back and change this text to white, I'm going to have a problem because I'm going to have to manually change it in all 20 documents. So the third way of doing it is really the best way, and that's the one where we have an external style. So that is a separate file that contains all of the formatting, all of the different styles that we need, and we link it to each web page. That way, if something changes site-wide, if I had made 20 web pages using that external style sheet, and I decide at that point to change this text to a different color, such as white, I change it one time in the style sheet, the external file, and it automatically updates on all of the files within my website. So those are the three different types of CSS styles, and most experts would tell you the only one that they would really use would be the external style sheet because it is so easy to change the formatting site-wide simply by opening up that CSS external file and making the changes there. So we'll be using external style sheets in this workshop, but I just wanted to make sure you understand the importance of working with CSS styling so that you maintain consistent formatting throughout your website. In this lesson, let's talk about how HTML and CSS, or cascading style sheets, work together. So what you're seeing on screen right now is what our blog site is going to look like. You'll be able to go in and customize it yourself afterwards if you want to switch out with your own photos and your own copy. But for this exercise, we're going to be using exactly what you see here on screen as the finished product. What I've done is I've gone in and I've also opened up the code so we can take a look at it. If you want to do that in your own browser, you're looking for the terminology that says View Source. I'm in Chrome on the Mac, so under the View menu, when I go to Developer, I'm able to view my source. You'll be able to find it in your own browser as well. It might just be in a different location. So here, I'm going to go in and take a look at the source code. And I wanted to point out to you, we've mentioned in another lesson, that your style sheets are located in the head section. So there are three different types of style sheets. The one we're using in here is called an external style sheet. It's a separate file that we tell the web page to reference to make the type look the way we want it to look. So it's an external file that is linked to the HTML page. The advantage to that is that we can update it later by simply updating that external file, and all the pages within the website that use that file will automatically have their formatting updated. It's so much easier than having to go in and change 20 web pages on our own. So what I wanted to point out to you is here I'm in the head section. Here is the head tag, and here is the close head tag. So within the head section, this is where we link and reference to this CSS file. It's an external file. I right-clicked on it and told it to open in a new window, and that's what I'm seeing here. So this is the actual CSS file. As I said, it's an external file, it has a CSS extension, and this has all the formatting in it that we're using throughout our site. For example, here is a particular one, the H1 tag, any place where the H1 tag is used in the copy, the copy is going to look serifed, 
So we're giving it a few choices of fonts to use. We're telling it to use Georgia. If you can't find Georgia, then use Times New Roman. If you can't find Times New Roman, use Times. And if all else fails, use your default serif font. We're telling it what size we want it to be. We're mentioning that we want it to be bold. And here's the color that we want it to have. So that would be anywhere on this site where you see this large text right here. We're telling it what color we want it to be, what size, and so forth. So I just wanted to show you that that's how HTML and CSS work together. We're setting up our web pages in HTML5, but we're using CSS in an external file to help format our text and make it easy for us later if we decide to make any changes. So if I wanted to change this text and make it bright yellow throughout 20 different web pages, I would just go back to that CSS style sheet, go in and change it there, and it automatically updates on all the pages. So that's an example of how HTML and CSS can work together.